Okay, hello everybody. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2, please. Start my clock to you. Okay. Title, title this talk um, First Love, Revelation 2. This is written to the church at Ephesus. God is speaking to the church through John, and uh, he is giving them a message of <coughs> correction and also a message of encouragement. In verse 1, it says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, speaking of Jesus. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. I read these verses, and I I just thought of our life in the Lord. You know, as saints, we're pretty busy. We we do a lot of things. We've, we've got jobs that we're holding down, and um, commitments here, and commitments there, and, and we'll have our meetings, and at the end of meetings, we'll, we'll announce what's going on. And it's, and it's, oh, we're gonna have a Wednesday night meeting here, and there's a Friday night house meeting, and oh, there's an outreach going on here, and, and this, this, event and that event is coming up, I thought about how this church at Ephesus was laboring, similar to what we do, where they were laboring doing different things and probably God-centered and, and uh, busy like we are in the Lord. And, and they even would get together and talk and, and about other beliefs that different churches had and different people had, probably along the lines of, of what we do, a similar thing. We'll say, wow, they, that church over there, they, they don't even tell, tell their people they need to be filled with the Spirit, or they allow drinking, or they, they do this and they do that. And we do a similar thing, where we can recognize by the power of the Holy Spirit what's, what's right, and what's wrong, and we we encourage each other, and we warn each other, and 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 so this church is doing things that we do. And as I read it, I I, I thought, wow, that's that's amazing. That at the same time, so we'll go verse three. And you as you as born and had patience for my name's sake, and has labored. And has not fainted. So they, they went through trials, they went through difficulties, and they probably said things like, you hang in there, and you've got to follow the Lord, don't give up. And encourage people to, they encourage the saints there to, to seek the Lord in different situations, as we do. Um, but in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. It made me think about how in everything I'm doing in the Lord, I want to always keep first, I love thee, Lord. And you think of it in a, in a, in a family. I hear families, they'll, they'll say to each other, um, say one's leaving the house, so like, goodbye. Dear, whatever. love you, right? Or you're talking on the phone, you're hanging up, love you. And it means a lot. It means a lot to the person who's hearing that. Can you imagine, uh, can you imagine a marriage where nobody said I love you to the other one? And I think, I thought, well, I suppose it can happen. <laughs> and if it did, it somehow in another way they'd have to be showing love if they're not going to verbally say I love you. I think most marriages probably, probably say I love you to, to your husband or your wife. And those words are very 
powerful. They really mean a lot to that person. It says, I care about you. It says, I want to be with you. I want to share my life with you. When, when the parents are telling their children that it's, I'm, I'm with you, I'm on your side, I'm, I'm your mom, I'm your dad, and you are really, really special to me. And, and it, it's a very wonderful thing to see that in a family, like whether, whether they're in the Lord or not in the Lord, to, to watch a family show that love affection. I think in the Lord, it's even that much more special because that love we have one for another is a love where, where the Lord is at, is at the center of it. And, and that we're seeking the Lord to help each other and, and it's the Word of God guiding the family. But this church at Ephesus was were doing all those things. They had the list. Hey, we're doing this this week, we're doing that, and this is coming up, and that's coming up, and, and look, stay away from that doctrine and that doctrine, and even encouraging each other to be patient and not give up. But in all of it, there was a lacking of loving God at the center. And, and this can be a danger to us where we can be coming to the meetings and hearing the gifts and taking communion and singing the choruses. And I've, I've heard it many times <laughs> said in testimonies, I, I felt like I was just going through the motions type of thing. And I think when, it, when we can be tempted or want towards that kind of attitude in the Lord, it's, it's because that love is beginning to slip a love where, where we need to stop and remind ourselves, oh, wait a minute, I'm here because I love the Lord. I'm here because I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ has cleansed me of all sin. You've been in prayer, and, and in prayer you're saying, Lord, help me to appreciate what you've done for me. Help me to appreciate that my sins have been forgiven. And you have given me your righteousness. Help me to value that so that I have this deep sense of appreciation for what you've done. So that I never, I never lose that love for you. And it's like um, we're, on, we're on our way to a meeting and, and we should train ourselves to be thinking, I'm going there because I love you. I'm going to sit down with your people, your sons and daughters filled with your spirit, and I'm going to be encouraged through their testimonies and, and through hearing your gifts and the songs that we sing, because I love you. I'm going to reach out and try and help that brother or sister, because I love you, Lord. And, and so that no matter what we're going through, it's, I'm going to go through this, Lord, because I love you. And I'm filled with such thanksgiving for all you've done that, that I know you're there with me. And I, and, and I know I'm going to grow in your ways as, as we appreciate that love. Praise the Lord. Um, so verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. And so there is the warning there, go back to the day you received the Holy Spirit. Go back there and think about how you were feeling and, and what the Lord showed you there. For myself it was, wow, Jesus is alive. I have answers. I know what's right and what's wrong. I know, I know what, what sin is now. At least I began to get an understanding. And, and it's this desire of, when I think back to that first, first time I received the Holy Spirit, the first works, when it all began for me, and, 
and how I was I was wanting to speak to people about the Lord just felt this deep love of God upon me I never want to lose that that feeling and, and, and that truth and so for each one of us go back and remember where you were your excitement you had when you were filled with the Holy Ghost and how are you feeling now if it slips some then we need to think of the chorus I keep falling in love with him over and over again we fall in love with the Lord <laughs> I, I enjoy saying in prayer I'm sure I'm not alone I love you Lord I love you I, t I tell the Lord that in prayer and I, and I want to say it with much more meaning than I even not much more meaning I guess not really. I tell my wife I love her but I want to so much more be saying it to the Lord Lord I love you and help me to grow in your ways help me to understand you more help me to not be slipping back like the church at Ephesus here and to have that strong first love grow let's go to Ephesians 1 Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus of course we're just going to look at it, some of the things he said to the church at Ephesus in verse 15 he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, Paul got word of this, of how the church in Ephesus was doing. Now Revelation was 40 years or so into the future from this day, or from the date in Acts, when, there, when the church first started, apparently that those verses in Revelation was about 40 years later. So we're going back in time to when Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus when they were young. Paul's encouraged of their faith and their love. And it excited Paul. And, and it really stood out and it made Paul rejoice. And so in verse 16 he's saying, I cease not to give thanks for you, making a mention of you in my prayers. So it's like, whoa, the brothers and sisters at Ephesus, they're growing in love, they're growing in faith. How wonderful that is. And so we can look at a verse like that and we can check ourselves. How's your faith and love towards your brother and sister? How's your faith and love towards the desire to, to take the word of God out to, to others in the world? If you see yourself desiring to grow in that, hallelujah, you'll grow. You will grow. No matter where you're at now, have that desire to grow and you will grow. Because that's the, the Lord's promise. And, and as we grow in this faith and love, just as Paul is excited, it creates an excitement amongst the whole fellowship. Because we're all wanting that for each other. I want to see you grow in faith and love. How can I help you? And it's, it's that attitude we have towards each other. It's that attitude that, that really comes forth at a, at, at, a, at a camp as we're excited to hear our testimonies and, and share and, um, and enjoy the things of the Lord. He says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. So they're growing in faith and love. Paul's excited. And, and he knows that that's like the seed to grow further in wisdom, in revelation, in knowledge. And, and, and then verse eight, 18 as well, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his saints. And what is the exceeding greatness, you see all these words of, Riches, enlightened, exceeding, inheritance, all has this base growth line from faith and love towards the Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost. If we're coming before the Lord in prayer to say, Lord, I love you, help me to grow in this faith, in this love, then our understanding becomes open more and more to all the other things from sort of verse 15 to verse 23. Of, of his power, his greatness, his knowledge, his understanding, we grow in amazing ways. 
So hold on to your first love. If it slips some and you can recognize it, praise the Lord, you recognize it. It happens to all of us. And let's all grow together. All people say. Amen. Amen.